You sold slaves. I had no money and an expensive wife. And where is she now? In another place with another man. Hey guys, as we went over in the last video about Stannis Baratheon's nightmares, George R. R. Martin's book series, A Song of Ice and Fire, it's pretty special. It's got some awesome lines, some awesome themes. Today, we're going to bridge the gap between two of the very best. This video is going to touch on stuff that you'll only find in the books, but my show only friends, you can dig this too. Let's read what the Reeds had to say while traveling north through the mountains with Bran, Summer, and Mirrors like, up and down, then down and up, then up and down again. I hate these stupid mountains of yours, Prince Bran. Yesterday, you said you love them. Oh, I do. My lord father told me about mountains, but I never saw one till now. I love them more than I can say. Bran made a face at her. But you just said you hated them. Why can't it be both? Mira reached up to pinch his nose. Because they're different, he insisted. Like night and day, or ice and fire. If ice can burn, said Jojen in his solemn voice, then love and hate can me. That's one of the two. Pretty solid, right? There's a subtle message here, and it relates directly to our boy, Sir Jorah Mormon. All right, first the background. So we've got the first men who worshipped the old gods. Then the Annals showed up, knights, faceless men clad all in steel. The knights showed up, bringing with them their faith, the faith of the seven. The Dothraki called Jorah, Jorah the Andal. and so did Dario. Jorah the Andal. But that was probably a mistake. House Mormons from the north, far north, this little island right here. Jorah Mormon's father is Jiro Mormon, and his aunt is Mage Mormon, that's Liana Mormon's mom. Mage worshipped the old gods, House Mormon's an ancient house, and House Mormon is of the north. So it's pretty safe to assume that the Mormons descend from the first men, not the Andals, meaning Jorah was raised to worship the old gods, not the faith of the seven. So Jorah is not an Andal. The Dothraki just didn't know any better. Either they look at all Westerosi as Andals, or maybe they just say that because Jorah's a sir a knight, and like we said, knighthood is tied to the faith of the seven, or the Andals. So how did Jorah get knighted? Thoros of Mir was first through the breach with his flaming sword. During the Great Jorah Rebellion. Not far behind him was Jorah Mormont of Bear Island. So Jorah earned his knighthood through bravery and battle, but we're getting ahead of ourselves. Jorah Mormont had Jorah marry at a young age. Jorah married Jorah to a girl from House Glover, another house of the north, pretty close to Bear Island, so it makes sense. They were married 10 years, but they never had any children, and his unnamed wife died following her third miscarriage. At some point, before the Great Jorah Rebellion, Geo Mormon abdicated his seat to his son Jorah, including his Valyrian steel sword, Longclaw, which at the time had a bear's head pommel, silver yet so worn that its features were all but indistinguishable. Jorah fought in Robert's Rebellion, for Robert of course, since Jorah's liege lord was Lord Eddard Stark at the time, once Eddard's father and older brother had been slayed by the Mad King. Jorah was at the Battle of the Trident, where Robert slew Rhaegar. Jorah saw the aftermath of the Sack of King's Landing, and like we said earlier, Jorah was a total badass at the Siege of Pike, earning his knighthood. Layer on the fact that Jorah had abdicated his seat, making Jorah the head of the House Mormon, it's pretty easy to understand why women would want him. He was a proven badass, head of the house, and he had a Valyrian steel sword. Sir Jorah was not lacking for any suitors, which brings us to the tourney at Lannisport. They held this on back of the Great Jorah Rebellion. At the tourney, Jorah broke nine lances on Jaime, and although he never unhorsed Jaime, King Robert gave Jorah the champion's laurel, to which Jorah crowned Lyness of House Hightower as his queen of love and beauty, a maid half his age. The first time he had beheld her, Jorah thought that she was a goddess come to earth, the maid herself made flesh. So, the night of his tourney win, Newly knighted Sir Jorah went to her father, Lord Leighton Hightower of Old Town, and Jorah asked for Lanessa's hand, drunk as much on glory as on wine. By rights, he should have gotten a contemptuous refusal, but Lord Leighton accepted the offer, and they were married there in Lannisport. For a fortnight, Jorah was the happiest man in the wide world. But the marriage went sour quickly, because the Hightowers are rich and they're from Old Town. Lanessa went from here to here. Bear Island's beautiful, but it's remote and it's cold and it's damp. Jorah's castle was no more than a wooden long haul. They had no masks, no mummer shows, no balls, and no fairs. Seasons might pass without a singer ever coming to play for them. There's not even a goldsmith on the island. Imagine that. Nowhere to buy fancy gold jewelry. And Sir Jorah's cook? He knew little beyond roast and stews, but Jorah's beautiful wife, Lanesse, 
She lost her taste for fish and venison. She was not happy with the cooking. What did he do? He sold poachers, and slavery is forbidden in the Seven Kingdoms, so Lord Eddard went to Bear Island to get him, but Jorah had already fled into exile. Nothing mattered by our love, I told myself. We fled to Lice, where I sold my ship for gold to keep us. His voice was thick with grief, and Danny was reluctant to press him any further, yet she had to know how it ended. Did she die there? She asked him gently. Only to me. In half a year, my gold was gone, and I was obliged to take service as a sellsword. While I was fighting Bravosi on the ruin, Lanes moved into the manse of a merchant prince named Tregor or Molin. They say she's his chief concubine now, and even his wife goes in fear of her. Danny was horrified. Do you hate her? Almost as much as I love her. If ice can burn, then love and hate can mate. Hey, excuse me, my queen. I find I am very tired. She gave him leave to go, but as he was lifting the flap of her tent, she could not stop herself calling after him with one last question. What did she look like, your Lady Liness? Sir Jorah smiled sadly. Why, she... she looked a bit like you, Daenerys. He bowed low. Sleep well, my queen.